Howdy ho, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. It's the Olympics, and I just want to spontaneously, and with no external pressure or prodding whatsoever, say that I love China. China is wonderful, a force for good in the world against capitalist pig dogs. At no point uh, have I ever been sexually harassed by members of the Chinese government. That was a total misunderstanding. As for the alleged concentration camps, what's wrong with wanting to concentrate? In America, with our deca deca decadent, it's spelled incorrectly, decadent lifestyles, there is no space for concentration. The Uyghurs are much better off and better treated than American slaves of capitalism and free markets. As to forced sterilization and genocide, what about voter suppression and Jim Crow and countless atrocities from the West? I'm Pastor Shane and I'll be your Olympian today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> The Winter Olympics are on, though your television may not be, judging by the ratings as NBC discloses that these Winter Games are on track for the lowest rated Winter Games in history. Yes, NBC, USA Network, and Peacock have averaged around 12.8 million viewers, which is a little bit less than the 27.8 million average from Pyongyang four years ago. Now, there could be multiple reasons for the drop in viewership. COVID pushed back the Summer Olympics, and we might all be feeling like Wait, didn't we just do this? Olympic fatigue could be an issue. It could also be the case that Americans are simply turned off by the Olympic Committee's choice of host. Beijing seems like a less than ideal choice for the Winter Olympics, as there's very little snow, but quite a lot of human rights violations. And throwing in the fact that China was in some way, shape, or form responsible for the whole COVID-19 thing leaves many in the world with little appetite to consume constant praise and honor to China. Basically, you can take your opening ceremony and quarantine it. But on the other hand, sometimes villainous nations make for the best moments in an Olympics where in some sense the Olympics can serve as a proxy war. That was captured in iconic moments like Jesse Owens winning four gold medals in the 1936 Olympics or the Miracle on Ice in 1980. But you're not likely to see that these days for several reasons, which I think further contributes to our disinterest. Number one, the athletes themselves are increasingly less likely to approach the Olympics in national or patriotic terms. Famously in the Tokyo Olympics, Simone Biles quit saying, quote, I feel like I'm also not having as much fun and this Olympic games, I wanted it to be for myself and it felt like I was still doing it for other people. Didn't win gold, but she did win Time Magazine's Athlete of the Year, which should have gone to me. I've quit like everything. That's how I got this body. Now, mental health issues aside, I don't think the viewpoint expressed by Simone is that uncommon. For the Olympians, the Olympics are about them, not their country. But if it's not about your nation, well, then most people don't have a lot of interest in the biathlon or figure skating. These are sports slash hobbies that we kind of sort of pay attention to, depending on the time zone, once every four years and then quickly forget. So if the athletes are about themselves, we're not really about them. We have a rooting interest for our country, but most people are not naturally super fans of cross-country skiing or ice dancing. That's why you'll never see it on your television except once every four years. And I fully expect the viewership to continue to drop because our culture is wary of nationalism and even a bit scornful of patriotism. The modern approach to the Olympics is this kumbaya, we are the world, we are the people nonsense. It's John Lennon's horrendous song, Imagine, which was literally played in the opening ceremonies of the Tokyo Summer Olympics. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for, or compete for, for that matter. And no religion to. Imagine all the people living life in peace. 
In our broadcast presentations of the Olympics try to capture that same sentiment, trying to eliminate country differences, embracing universalism and world citizenship. But that's a childish notion, and frankly, an unbiblical one. Now wait a minute, isn't Christianity about unity? Doesn't it celebrate diversity? Doesn't the Bible say that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile? Or how about this beautiful picture from Revelation? After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Every tribe, every people, every language unified. But it's unified by Christ, by an ideology, by a theology, by a belief. The unity of the song Imagine and the Olympics is an abandonment of all ideologies or beliefs. We can have peace and unity when no one is really right, no one is really wrong, no one is better, no one is worse. And so China and the United States can be equally good nations. And we saw that when Eileen Gu, who was born and raised in the United States, decided to ski for China, which means she had to renounce her U.S. citizenship because China does not allow dual citizenship. Or maybe she's just getting special treatment, because when asked about it, she was very evasive. Trying to clarify, are you still a U.S. citizen, or how's that, how's that work? Um, I've always been super outspoken in my gratitude to the U.S. Um, to the U.S. team as well. They have been nothing but supportive to me, um, and so for that I'm forever grateful. And same to the Chinese team; they have, you know, been so so supportive of me. And so in that sense, I feel like sport is really a way that we can unite people. It's something that. It doesn't have to be related to nationality. It's not something that um, it can be used to divide people. We're all out here together pushing the human limit when um, the other two athletes were going through their own emotions at the end. Um, I really went over to them and I made it clear that I won because of them, that because they had inspired me so much, they had made me the, the skier that I was. So I kind of wanted to express my gratitude to them as well. We're all out here doing this together. We're pushing the sport together, um, especially women's skiing. So yes, no, not sure, but it gives me a chance to bust out one of my favorite monologues. Miss Gu, what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. And see. Now, the reason this is particularly egregious is not because she decided to ski for another country. If her mother were Australian and she decided to ski for the land down under, Americans would be a little bit miffed, but it would not be so scandalous, because culture is not simply about trivial things like race or cuisine differences or dress styles. No, cultures are also about ideas, ideologies, theologies, beliefs. And those differences are not trivial and they're not equal. Here's the Apostle Paul to help illustrate the difference. One of Crete's own prophets has said it, Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. This saying is true. The Bible proclaims that all people have intrinsic value and are loved by God, and we are all equal in Christ, including Cretans, but the Bible makes no such claim that all cultures are equal. The problem of multiculturalism, which things like the Olympics embrace, is that built into multiculturalism is an assumption that all cultures are equal, and they are not. A country that sends their boys and girls off to school together has a different ideology than a country that throws acid in the face of girls who want to learn and one culture is better than the other. They are not equal. China is an evil regime, guilty of countless and continuing human rights violations, forced sterilization, Uyghur concentration camps, oppressing and suppressing its own people in big and small ways, as Eileen Gu helps illustrate. In reply to one of her Instagram posts, a commentator said, why can you use Instagram and millions of Chinese people from mainland cannot? Why you got such special treatment as a Chinese citizen? That's not fair. Can you speak up for those millions of Chinese who don't have internet freedom? Gu responded, anyone can download a VPN. It's literally free on the App Store. 
Ms. Gu, what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response. All right, Yahoo News explains. Western journalists in China for the Olympic Games are finding it impossible to access services such as Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Google on local Wi-Fi networks. Even in Olympics, only Wi-Fi has restrictions. Local search engines do not return results for the Washington Post and the New York Times, for example. And all Yahoo Sports and news articles are blocked on every network. It's all part of China's concerted and thorough effort to block off internet access to certain elements of the outside world, like social media, alternative views, and Western philosophies. There's little recourse for China citizens to get to that content, even if they know it exists. VPNs, virtual private networks, designed to get around the so-called Great Firewall are illegal to operate in China. A country has a culture, and a culture is about more than just skin color, or style of dress, or speech, or food. There are values, and ideals, and beliefs. A country that oppresses its people is a lesser country than one that allows for liberty. A country that bans Instagram is... Mm, okay, they might have a point on that one. You know, we do have our own share of problems. Every country does. No country is perfect. And as Christians, our allegiance is primarily to God's kingdom. There's an unhealthy jingoism that can emerge with nationalism that's unfitting for Christians. But the unity in Revelation is birth from a new citizenship in heaven. Jews, Gentiles, Chinese, Americans, but no dual citizenship. It's unity through one citizenship and a condemnation of all the kingdoms that are not God's kingdom. So, sort of the opposite of the Olympics. Well, that's all for today. As usual, like, subscribe, rate, review, leave a comment, write a glowing review. You can follow me on the major socials and check out my author's Facebook page. Some new things will be popping up there shortly. And I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. (laughs) 